train and run it around the little living room in the Bronx and it'll go hoo, 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 and smoke would come out. Probably toxic. Probably induced cancer in a newt somewhere down the street. I don't know. But the thing is, I enjoyed the train set. You're getting a free copy of uh, Government Zero. Don't worry about it. It was worth the call that you invested just now. Cost you a few cents, but you got a book out of it. What What more could you ask for? Look, before this hour goes by, I think what we should do, for the sake of continuity and for your entertainment, I mean, let's face it, talk radio has a, a number of different facets or aspects to it, but the primary aspect has to be, it has to be somewhat entertaining, or else what are you going to listen for, right? So since you're listening to have a, a lift to feel good, let's go back for a minute and listen to a little bit more of that great New Yorker profile of yours truly, Michael Savage, right now on the Savage Nation. Duh. I'm going to play for you a piece of the interview on the podcast of the author of the article, Party of One, Profile of Michael Savage. Profile of Michael Savage by Mr. Senna. Right now, from the New Yorker on the Savage Nation, fire Michael away. Michael Savage is one of the most popular conservative talk radio hosts in the country. His show, The Savage Nation, reaches more than 8 million listeners each week. We so-called conservatives are actually the liberals of America. And the so-called liberals are the actual fascists of America. Savage's disdain for the left is savage. One of his many books is called Liberalism is a Mental Disorder. But listeners to his show get a lot more than politics, as Kella Fasana tells us in his profile this week. Welcome back, Kay. Thanks. So the election of Barack Obama has put conservatives back in the opposition, and that has re-energized talk radio. Is that what got you interested in doing this piece? And why did you pick Michael Savage of all the conservative talk that, show hosts? That's part of what got me interested in doing this piece. I, I'd heard him over the years and found myself listening to him a bunch last year during the election. And he was interesting partly because he seemed to be so off-message. Oh, I know what you're, you're, you're expecting, but you're not going to get it from me. You'll have to go to one of the... Uh, other talk show hosts to get uh, Obama's a Marxist and McCain is a war hero. If that's what you want from now until November, you're in the wrong uh, you're on the wrong dial position. Savage, despite being identified as a conservative talk show host, he was an herbalist and he wrote a whole string of books about natural healing. But he got disillusioned by a couple of things. One of them was, you know, was AIDS and his disillusionment right. with the gay rights world. Uh, another was that he says that affirmative action stymied his academic career and he couldn't mm -hmm. get a tenure track job because he was a white male. The conservatives of today, like me, those who believe right, in individual. Fine, turn it off. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. The engineer, unfortunately, has a computer that doesn't work right, so he's replaying stuff that you heard in the last hour, and there's no point replaying what you already heard. So let's go to the callers who want to call about news of the day. They don't want to go back to 2009. They want to talk about the topic that they won't let go of, which is uh, the issue of, if you're a young man, why you won't get married, and many people are still calling on that. Larry on WABC on that issue of why young men won't get married. Go ahead, please. A perfect example is going back in time to the movie of uh, with Ernest Borgnine, Marty, which was an Academy Award movie. Oh, with, we're Marty. Yeah, yeah, the kind of sh uh, kind of a schleppy guy. Guy, no one likes me. I'm ugly. Uh, mama's boy, and he meets a girl who's kind of plain, and they and Frank Sutton's in it. He was. Uh, uh, you know, the actor, uh, you'd call her pilot. You'd okay, what you're saying is about an ordinary guy, lives with his mother, can't really date anyone, then he meets an ordinary girl and they get married. What is your main point? Is that guys are looking for a movie star? Yeah, I mean, the girl was a plain girl, but they, they kind of fell in love. and, and that was our There are no plain <laughs> girls anymore. There are no plain girls. The girls are forced to try and be superwoman, too. You know the pressure on them? With the, the breast implants, the butt implants, the facelifts. Look at the pressure that are being put on women. You can't just blame the guys. They have dogs and cats, and they're happy with that. Well, to me, today there's no happiness at all. Everybody's trying to be something that they're not. It's that simple. All right, my friend, thanks for calling. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I. Now, let me go to the uh, headlines that made it to MichaelSavage.com. I, I know you know the story. In the middle of the night, as you slept... 
these gangsters passed a budget giving Barack Obama enough money to buy off every crony in the history of crony capitalism. In the middle of the night, these louts called Republicans, mainly on the Mitch McConnell, passed a spending hike that would bust any budget wide open. I think it was $80 billion. Wait, here it is. 144-page bill amounts to $558 million in new spending per page. That's what your so-called fiscal conservatives did to you last night. Budget buster. Senate passes debt and spending hike in the dead of the night. Are you listening to me? Spending some $80 billion over the next two years, giving Obama enough money to buy off every illegal voter in the history of the country. $40 billion in new domestic spending in 2016 and 17. This is what your government did in the middle of the night. This is something that would not even be permitted in Uruguay. You used to hear about banana republics doing budgets in the middle of the night. Well, we're lower than banana republics. Under Barack Obama, we have sunk lower than third world nations in terms of corruption. And I stand by that statement. I want you to research the green racket. If you got nothing to do over the weekend, just do a quick Google search on the green energy racket and see uh, the name of the companies, see which companies come up, see the names of those who've gotten billions of dollars in federal loans and guarantees and never paid them back and continue to feast on the public trough. And then trace their names to senators and congressmen by the same name. And then you'll understand why I say that this is clearly the most corrupt administration in history. But then you say, Mike, what can we do about it? Mike, we love you. Mike, we know you're right. Mike, government zero says it all. We understand that. We've been listening to you. What can we do about it? Well, you can say it's too late. You can throw your hands up. I don't think you need to throw your hands up. I think there's an awakening that has begun. And I believe the 40 solutions, which I called 40 Actions to Save America in Government Zero, are the beginning of this awakening. Don't give up. One, start a nationalist party. Two, close the borders completely for seven years. Three, deport all illegal aliens in American prisons. Four, end the amendment which gives the anchor baby's law meaning. There is no anchor baby's law. But it's an amendment to the Constitution that was never written to permit uh, non-citizens to become citizens. That's not what it was written for. Five, make English the official language of the United States. Six, require government-issued ID to vote. You say that's a no-brainer. It doesn't guarantee the voter is a citizen. We know that. But at least it confirms that he or she is alive. Dead voters overwhelmingly vote progressive. Seven, reintroduce civics classes to elementary and secondary schools. Eight, restore to active duty all military officers purged by Barack Obama. Offer them a generous bonus as an incentive to return. Nine, restore physical standards in the military. Ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, repair our relations with Russia. Russia should be an ally in the war against radical Islam and a partner in the world economy. The United States should propose an agreement that has Russia cease any aggression outside its borders in return for assurance that the U.S. and Europe will stay out of the affairs of nations bordering Russia. 13. Sign a mutual defense treaty with Israel. 14. End all foreign aid including to Israel. 15. Recognize radical Islam as the enemy. 16. Allow profiling and security investigations. 17. Demand Congress declare war against ISIS and destroy them. 18. Close all tax loopholes for Hollywood. 19. Close, fund all climate science research to include the skeptics. Balance the funding and we'll see a sudden uptick in skepticism about the real effects of man's activities on climate. 20. Withdraw from the TPP. 21. Withdraw, withdraw from NAFTA. 22. Narrow the Federal Reserve's mandate to a strong dollar and stable prices. 23. Mark Zuckerberg and the H-1B visa program. 24. Institute a flat tax. 25. Reinstate the Glass-Steagall Act. 26. Reinstate the Wall Street, Street uptick rule. 28. Here's a beauty for me. Institute tort reform. Frivolous lawsuits and disproportionate awards drive up medical expenses. States should cap medical liability at $250,000 per claim. This is one thing my home state of California did right and it worked. 
eliminate government employee pensions and more all in government zero this is the savage nation back in a minute be here or be nowhere join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage government zero is this week's featured conservative book club editors pick did you know that government zero was also the featured article in monday's editors pick newsletter for the conservative book club and the 1026 newsletter went out to over 158,000 conservative book club opt-in list members. So the book is getting an awful lot of play. And I want to thank many of you for uh, all of you who've gone out and, and supported the show and the message. But I want to go back to the main issue. I think it's a good issue. I think it's an important issue. And it's a simple one that I raised yesterday. Uh, one particular race on the planet is not reproducing sufficient numbers of their own to survive much longer if you look at replacement rates i think the number is you need um i think it was three children per family or is it you need three children per family to reproduce your your race i know you can't mention this but i guess i will because i have no other way to put it so if you have 2.1 children which is the average in some countries where europeans uh, reside in Sweden, it's 1.1 per couple. In Italy, I think it's less than zero. Apparently, Italian men like themselves so much, they don't want to give themselves away to women. I think their rate is about 0 0.1 children per couple. So few people in Italy are getting married, it's, not, it's hardly noticeable. And this is a reality. Now, and this is an important issue for a couple of reasons. It's because of this demographic time bomb and it's an inverted demographic time bomb amongst white people. It's because of this demographic time bomb that those who are running the country are bringing in tens of millions of illegal aliens who have very large families because they need to keep the factories running. They need to have the sheets changed in the hotels, uh, et cetera. You can fill in the blank, can't you? So it's a good question. Why are you not getting married? What are you afraid of? I asked a loaded question. Young men, why are you afraid to get married? And it goes back to yesterday's show. Did you hear yesterday's program where I said I've gone through some very dark phases in my life? And were it not for my family, I probably wouldn't have been able to go through those phases. But I was very lucky to to have a strong family to to fall back upon. And as I said to someone in my family, was it not for your mother, you wouldn't be here? Which is quite a, a remarkable idea for most young men who don't understand that. Young men who say, I don't want to get married. I don't need to get married. I have loads of girlfriends. What do I need it for? And I look at them and I say, well, if it wasn't for your mother, you wouldn't be here. It's quite a revelation, isn't it? You do realize that unless you get married and have a family, A, your family line dies. That's number one. That used to be a thing. People would say, I don't want my family line to die out. It was something that every young man carried around in his heart and his mind since he was a product of, what, hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, millions of years of evolution hundreds of thousands of a family years of a family line and now what you're gonna let your family line die out because of what internet pornography that you can go into a bar and meet someone and just have sex and what do you need a woman for is that what you're thinking and because it's connected to zero culture in uh, government zero why are you afraid to get married why are you afraid to have children what's stopping you what did it to you what happened to your brain you know, this is a break not only with history, not only with human history, but it's a break with everything reasonable. It's a form of cultural suicide for an entire generation of young white males to not get married and have children. It's a form of cultural and personal suicide ending your family line. At the same time you're doing this, the evilest people in the history of the world are flooding America with immigrants who have no problem with having 6, 10, 18, 12 children, whatever as many as they can get away with dumping on our shores to take care of, that you take care of, by the way. How is this happening? How is this happening that the West has young men, whether it's in Norway, Denmark, Holland, Sweden, Germany, France, Italy, the United States of America, Australia, what happened to the white race? Dare I say it's racial? Because the white race has the lowest percentage of children of any race on earth replacement children now why am I talking about it why shouldn't I talk about it is it illegal is it on some banned list that I can't raise this issue 
I want to know what happened to young white men. Why have they 